Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. The title of this podcast is going to be Sex, Lucid Dreaming, and Astral Projection. I'm going to talk about um, how sex can influence astral projection and uh, how you can use lucid dreams to astral project. First, I want to cover a couple of questions that come up on a regular basis, and that'll take us right into our discussion. Uh, the first one happens quite often, and it's usually something like, do you travel to the Akashic Records or the more esoteric plane levels other than the astral? In other words, um, they're like, okay, the astral is nice, but don't you get to the really high level stuff? Uh, yes, I have traveled to things like the mental plane, and there's absolutely nothing I could tell you about it in English. Um, it's, it's a very cerebral experience, and trying to explain it is difficult. Astral experiences can be difficult to explain in English. Things like the mental plane, it's impossible. I won't even attempt it. However, I think you'll find, though, that Experienced astral projectors um, tend to specialize. Um, Robert Monroe, for instance, um, uh, author of Journeys Out of the Body, um, I had some conversations with him in the 80s, and he was very much interested in that point of exploring alternate realities and what he called non-ordinary realities. And uh, this was something that, that he was fascinated with and, and he explored. And some of his experiences were listed in, in, in one of his three books. Uh, I, on the other hand, tend to gravitate more towards um, astral exploration. I enjoy, for instance, time travel and alternate dimensional travel here on Earth, as well as outer space exploration. I'm not saying that those things are in any way superior to anything else. It's just, it's what I am interested in. It's what I prefer to do. I guess you could see me as kind of a down and dirty Indiana Jones type of astral projector rather than someone who's more of an academician who wants to get his hands on the Akashic Records. Oh, and for anyone who doesn't know what they are, um, they are supposed to be a astral repository of all knowledge of everything that has ever occurred in this particular iteration of the universe. Think of it as one gigantic library, if you will. Now, from my standpoint, I spent a lot of time in libraries when I was in school, and I'm pretty much done with them uh, at this point. Now, to give you an example of what I find interesting, I encountered, um, geez, this was back in the early 90s, as I recall, an alternate dimension, which is very close to this one, which I find very interesting. And in it, when I first arrived, I was shocked because I discovered that there was no United States of America. We were very much, we had very much the status of Canada in that we had actually had a royal governor, a British royal governor, up until the 1940s. Uh, I remember walking by a bookstore, and in that bookstore, I saw uh, pricing in American pounds, not dollars. I saw street signs that said kilometers and not miles. Um, and uh, I also saw a, a book or was some sort of a newspaper that was referring to the 1980s where the American red team and the American blue team for the first time came together in one Olympic team sometime in the 1980s. Well, this intrigued me. And in further journeys, I went back to the origin of where our timelines split. And I was hovering above a large harbor, and I wish I could tell you more about the harbor, but I was entranced with a battle that was going on. 
There were ships firing at one another. And then I heard a very clear telepathic shout, if you will, that His Excellency General Washington has been killed. I think this was the main junction where this alternate reality, this alternate physical plane split off from Mars. Uh, many historians say, and I'm not going to get into too much history, don't worry, that without General Washington, George Washington, our revolution would never have happened. Um, our army, our colonial army, could never have been held together by anyone less than George Washington. So in this reality, he died in some sort of a sea battle near a large harbor. I assume it was probably something like New York or Boston. That, that would make the most sense. Now, in our reality, obviously, there was no such battle. So uh, I don't know anything more than that. Jumping ahead, I do know, and I don't have a full history. I wish I did. I know that the, the southern states did split from the north. Um, and they became their own semi-autonomous state under British rule. I know it had something to do with trade, something to do with slavery. I do know, though, that there was no war. There was no civil war as we had in our reality. It was relatively, relatively amicable, amicable split from the standpoint of no one died. However, the two nations were quite um, at odds with one another for many years, which was why this joint Olympic team in the 1980s was such a major story. So that gives you an idea of, of some of the things that I like to experience. And I'll take that type of experience over some journey in some esoteric mental realm any day of the week. Now, I have had numerous questions, one from Romantic Lurker and another from I'm a Luckies. And they involve sex and astral projection. Um, part of the question is, does sex affect your ability to astral project? Uh, and then Romantic Lurker asks about, um, what about love on the astral plane? And I thought that was interesting because normally all the questions I get are just, what about sex on the astral plane? Nobody asks about love. So that, that definitely caught my attention. Now, uh, sex in and of itself is a natural physical function. It's necessary for the continuation of our race and every other um, organism on planet Earth. Um, it really, in and of itself, neither aids or subtracts from your vibrational level. It neither aids nor subtracts in and of itself your ability to astral project. Can it be, what is this association with astral projection? Can it be used um, to help astral projection? Well, I have discussed in one of my earlier podcasts the different ways that you can uh, try to astral project if you're having trouble. And I talked about denying yourself food, denying yourself water, and also uh, denying yourself sexual gratification. I can talk a little bit more about that. The human drive for sexual gratification is extremely strong. If you are denied, or if it is denied in the physical, it will try to exert itself in another way. And I know that when I was younger, and of course didn't have uh, as much of a sexual outlet, um, I heard stories of some people in middle school who, uh, who, who had all kinds of experiences, but it wasn't me, I can tell you that. Uh, and I would find myself from time to time uh, astral projecting uh, with this strong sexual motivation. And it wasn't something that I had intended to do, but it was this drive that had propelled me out of my body trying to achieve some sort of level of satisfaction that it could not uh, achieve in my physical middle, high, middle school body. So this is a very strong drive, and it can influence your, your abilities to astral project. Um, now, 
in Bob Monroe's book, Journeys Out of the Body, he actually mentions uh, uh, something that he saw on the lower astral plane. And I would suggest this was probably on the, the, the level of the astral that's about as low as you can get right very, very close to the physical. And he saw what he called the, the human pile. Now, this pile was essentially large amounts of uh, astral humans all together in one big group having all manners of sex. And um, it was something that he found, I think, weirdly attracting, but also very repellent. And, uh, and he certainly ended up steering clear of that because it, it's a trap. Uh, however, what other forms are there? Is there love on the astral plane? Is there joining, which, um, which people have heard talked about on the astral plane? And I could say, yes, there is. I've experienced this twice on the astral. And after the first time... I wrote this little blurb, which I hope helps to explain what really is probably inexplicable. Uh, when you choose to merge true loving soul energy with someone in the higher astral planes, you know everything about them in an instant, and they, you. You experience every victory, defeat, pleasure, and pain that they have lived from their perspective. There are no secrets held back. For a brief moment, that seems to last for an ecstatic eternity. You become one being, complete and whole. When you eventually part, you never feel quite whole again. Now that, members of Astral Club, is true joining of soul energy on the astral plane. So this isn't something that I think most people would want to undertake um, pell-mell or without some very, very deep thought ahead of time. The first time that it happened to me, I was not expecting it at all. And I actually met the person that I had merged with, which is a whole other story because they were only, they lived only a few blocks away. Um, we had no relationship because in the physical world, our relationship would not have been acceptable. In the astral, obviously things are very different. So that is an expression of, of how sex and how love is involved with the astral plane and how it could even be used to astral project. Um, but I'd also like to talk about lucid dreaming and astral projection. Now, lucid dreaming, what is the definition of lucid dreaming and how is it different from astral projection? Lucid dreaming is simply being conscious in your dream. In a dream where you are conscious, you are the master of your universe. With perfect control of your will, you can add, subtract characters, scenery, dialogue, anything you want. You are the theater manager. You are the director. You are the producer of this dream. You have total control over the environment. You can do whatever you want to do. In astral projection, however, this is a whole nother reality. You can... Uh, walk about and fly about in this reality, much like you can in the physical. But it is outside of your control because it is outside of you. So they're two very different things. To give you an example of a lucid dream that I had, um, I was uh, I found myself in the backyard of my old family home, and there's a, fo a little forest behind that home. And there was a few people just kind of hanging around there uh, talking. And I decided to have a little fun, decided to do a little Charlton Heston and Moses type uh, action. And I announced to them that, that I would bring in a boiling sea 
And of course, they all started laughing at me. So I lifted my hand and in came this gigantic tsunami of a boiling sea. And everybody started freaking out. And I said, don't worry. I held up my hand and the wave stopped dead. And then I said, I shall freeze it. And it froze into this gigantic frozen wave. Now that was my that was me having a little bit of a little bit of fun, but it illustrates for you that I had total control over this environment because it was actually my environment. In uh, in astral projection, it's obviously very different. I move through that reality like I move through the physical, but I cannot control it. But, and I do I, I do I think that lucid dreaming is is something that should be explored, even if you. Even if you're not going to use it for astral projection, which we'll talk about in a second, if you're looking for a book, I would recommend Stephen LaBerge. That's S T E P H E N, Stephen LaBerge, L A B E R G E. His first book, which is a seminal work in lucid dreaming, was called Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming. If you go on Amazon, You'll find that it's like, a, I think it's, it's a paperback for $7.59. Uh, I think you should, if you're interested at all, you should buy it. It's a very, very interesting book. It's been on my bookshelf for, for decades. Uh, however, if you are completely broke, you don't have two nickels to knock together. If you go on Google and you search for, you search for Stephen LeBurge exploring the world of lucid dreaming, you'll find a PDF copy that you can download and and you can read it, and then maybe when you get a couple of dollars together, you can actually go out and order the book from Amazon. Uh, so that's Lucid Dreaming, and that's a great book that you should look at. How can it be used to astral project? And this is, is a good method for people who are interested in Lucid Dreaming, and who are also perhaps having some trouble projecting. So what did I, how did I use lucid dreaming? I, I did a lot of experimentation when I was younger, trying to figure out, because I, I knew they were intuitively linked, because I remember once I'd had a lucid dream that had transitioned into an astral projection, and I tried to find out why. What I, I'll give you the short version. What I was able to find out is that two things, the sensation of falling and the exertion of will is all that you need to astral project from a lucid dream environment. Uh, if you're having a dream and you gain conscious control over it, jump off the nearest roof. Drive off the nearest bridge. Jump out of an airplane if you're in that situation. Whatever you have to do to get that sensation of falling, accomplish it as quickly as possible. And as soon as you do that, with a singular pure will, wish to leave your physical body and astral project. You will find yourself experiencing probably either a momentary blackness or you might be flying down a long dark tunnel, which um, happened to me on upon occasion in this experience. I actually named it the Valley of the Shadow of Death from uh, Psalm uh, 23, I believe. Anyway, this is an excellent method to astral project for those who've been having some trouble using other types of methods. This gives you one other way to, to try to leave your body. And if it's something that you're interested in, then it, I think it's an ideal way to go about um, astral projecting. Okay, that was um, what I wanted to cover in this podcast, which uh, involves sex, lucid dreaming, and astral projection. We are getting very close to the thousand mark in subscribers. I want to thank everyone who subscribed. I want to thank all the folks who came over from Reddit. Those people are great, and I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be preparing something special. Uh, I'm going to have some announcements after we get over 1,000. And I think you'll be interested in that. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like you to like this podcast if you liked it. I'd like you to share. You know, there's a little share button there. Share the love. <laughs> 
If you, if you know someone else who you think might be interested in this type of topic, go ahead and share it with them. Uh, and uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you can help them out. Subscribe if you haven't decided to subscribe yet. And also hit that bell button and you can be uh, notified every time I post a new podcast. So everyone, I just um, want to thank you once again. And as always, I will see you on the astral plane.